I grew up inside of Philadelphia, but I would go to school in the suburbs. Being gay and Jewish is, is like any culture. I think all cultures and all religions offer a great net. It's a great net to be able to hold you and get you through the day. The problem with nets, though, is that some people fall out of them. And so I was always felt like, oh, there's this great net that's holding everybody together. And yet there was this big part of me that would always slip out and then feel lost. I remember picking, I was a huge Strangers with Candy fan and Amy's everything Amy Sedaris. And so I went to the Borders bookstore when there still were Borders bookstores and was leafing through looking to see did Amy Sedaris write anything else? And I came across David Sedaris that way. There was one story where the narrator was gay and I, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I kept looking to see, oh, did he, um, the narrator must be female. And it wasn't, it was a gay male narrating a, like a weird story, I think about falling in love with Mike Tyson. Like it was bizarre, but I, but I had never, I had never read that. We had read Sonny's Blues in school and I, I connected to it so much and I didn't understand why. <laughs> um, and as I kept reading more and more James Baldwin and then realizing, oh, I share something with him and I share something with Langston Hughes. And suddenly there was this rope that was connecting me to people of other cultures that I never really believed. So it really was the literature, it was finding other voices speaking to me. And that's actually with We the Animals, you only find out about, you only literally find out about the queerness of the narrator at the very end of the novel, spoiler alert. But Jeremiah wanted to know, did I connect to anything as a gay man to this story early on? And it was, you know, in the DNA of every page. I watched a cut of the film a year ago. And I work with an organization called Rightopia Lab and it's nonprofit creative writing workshops for kids of all ages and all backgrounds. And I had been doing lots of uh, group workshops with uh, specifically the queer uh, teens. And I remember watching the first cut, which was not what one can see now, but I was so inside of that experience with my kids. And to see a story about a young, young boy who is at the moment where life is so tingly and alive because your sexuality and sense of stealth is really starting to break through and then to feel the universe clamp down on that energy um, is something that's so severe and so traumatic and still happens even in the worlds of New York and LA. Um, but to see the story of a boy who's resilient enough to push back against those shadows and to be amongst my kids while that was happening, it, I mean, it, as a mentor, it just, it fills me up. It gives me purpose. To all of the young people out there, to the LGBTQ and the rest of the rainbow alphabet, um, and even to the straight ones, um, you will find your people, but you have to work to find your people. They exist, they're out there, they're hilarious and weird and dramatic and colorful and waiting for you, and you have to start finding those pathways, and they exist inside of that weird kid at the end of the hallway who no one talks to, and they exist in that teacher who's just a little bit too funny, and they exist in the library, and they exist across the internet and different countries and different cities, and they're waiting for you. And I promise you that they are there. You just have to work a little harder, but that's okay. That's okay to work a little harder. You'll have so many stories to tell. Hi, I'm Dan Katroser, and it gets better.